Rub up your engines! All right, it happens to all of us. The stupid check engine light comes on. The owner of the Chevy took it to various places. They told them various stories. He went to an auto parts store. They sold them the wrong part. So let's go through it the right way and figure out what the heck's going on here. So we're gonna get out the big guns and not mess around. This will tell us everything we need to know and more. And here we go, start setting it up. Now he did notice when his check engine light came on, his gas mileage got worse. So there's a reason to look into it. There are hundreds of things it can be. Don't ever guess, use a scan tool. And in this case, I'm using a top line scan tool because I'm gonna find everything that's wrong with this car and find out if anybody was telling the truth or whether they were all fools. We'll do an intelligent diagnosis. It's just like gambling. Chevy Colorado 2007. There it is. We'll go to diagnosis and we'll do a whole system scan. Here we go. It checks everything. Doesn't take all that long either. Goes through all the different systems. Check out the report. Now we're doing a smart scan. It's going to find what's good and what's bad and since it's color coded, obviously red is bad. Green is good. Okay. So we'll start out with the PCM. It's got a code. EO 449 EVAP Emission Evap Vent Solenoid Control Circuit. Now that's a code for the EVAP system. Something's going on with the vent solenoid. Could be a bad vent solenoid. Could be uh, wiring. But that's not really going to make the vehicle run poorly at all. It's just an anti-pollution thing. So let's look at the other six codes here. Well, the electronic brake control module, he knew the ABS was acting up. And it's got a code for the left front wheel speed sensor, the right front wheel speed sensor, the left front anti-lock brake system, channel in release too long, it's taking too long to release. The right front anti-lock brake system is taking too long to release. It lost communication with the computer and it lost communication with the body control module and dash integration module. Well, we know the ABS didn't work, and now we know it would probably cost a small fortune to make it work. Just realize the ABS isn't working correctly. Drive normally. I only have one car that has ABS, all the rest don't, so to me it wouldn't be that big of a deal. Well, now comes the big guns. We're going to analyze the live data stream and try to figure out what's happening, why his gas mileage went down. We're looking at the air fuel ratio. 14.7 to one is perfect. And what is this? 14.70 to one. So that's working okay. Okay, we know it's not the engine coolant temperature. That's got the right temperature. I knew it had an EVAP problem, right? It's probably a bad EVAP vent valve because the car's idling. And when the car is idling, it's not supposed to vent. And here it says EVAP vent solenoid is commanding venting. So it's only supposed to vent when the car is sitting, it goes through the charcoal canister, gets rid of the hydrocarbons, and pure air, theoretically at least, comes out of the vent on the top. But it's venting now when it's running, which it should never do. So either there's an electronic problem commanding it when it shouldn't, or the valve itself has gone bad. But that's really not going to make the thing run bad. So let's keep looking. Now, for some reason, the long-term fuel trim is 7.81%. So it's adding 7.8% fuel in the long term. So for some reason, the computer thinks the vehicle's running lean, doesn't have enough fuel, so it's adding 7.8% fuel, and that's enough to make it have crappy gas mileage. Well, let's look at some more information. Now, here's another weird thing. The short term fuel trim as it's running, it's actually subtracting 3%, 0.78%. So it's actually running rich at idle, but lean at high speeds. Let's rev it up a little. See how I rev it up and now it's adding fuel? Now it's zero, but it's adding fuel and then subtracting fuel. The short term fuel trim is showing what's happening right now, the long term over time. So long term, it thinks it's running lean and it's adding fuel, but short term, it's subtracting fuel. This is kind of a classic sign of the fuel injectors are a bit dirty because it might sound crazy but a dirty fuel injector they're supposed to make an upside down cone perfectly shaped cone to spray atomize the fuel if let's say they're dirty you might think well they're dirty give less fuel so you know it wouldn't be running rich when it's idling but no because if it's dirty instead of spraying a nice mist it globs and the globs have too much fuel <laughs> so it makes it run rich because the globs aren't a mist and it's running a little bit too rich so when I revved it up it actually went the opposite way a lot of times a dirty fuel injector will do just that well let's check out the misfire data see if it misfires at all now we're going on 80 88 cycles of misfire data see if it shows any what do we have misfire it's a five cylinder 
zero. So it's not having any misfires. But if we look closely, over time, we'll look at the history. The top ones are alive up to a certain amount. This is the total history, and the total history shows two on cylinder number two. All the others are zero. For some reason, cylinder number two has a history of two misfires. He's owned this since new. He's never changed the spark plugs. That is the numero uno thing to do. A small amount of misfires. I've seen them where they have hundreds. This one was only two. <laughs> it's not much, but if they're all worn over time, it'll get cumulative and it can start giving you worse gas mileage, especially as the gap starts to stretch on it. So get all this plastic crap out of the way and press toe. Now we got some room. We'll check out the spark plugs. We'll take the ignition coil off. And pull out a spark plug. Oh, I'll take out spark plug. Look at it. Worn out spark plugs. So you got new spark plugs. And here's a warning. Modern spark plugs are all coated. You don't have to put any NICs on them. If you do, you, they won't be on right. So just put them in like this. Stick it in. Now you can use a torque wrench if you want. You get them finger tight. Then put on a ratchet. This is on. Then go just a little. That's perfect. And I'll put the ignition coil back on. We'll do the other four. Always change all of them. Don't be foolhardy and change just one. Unless you have an old junky engine where one cylinder so worn it eats them up. Then you can change just one at a time. Never Never forget to tighten the clamps because if you don't tighten the clamps, you get an air leak. The mass airflow sensor measures the air coming in. If this leaks, you'll have unmetered air going in. Your car will run like crap. Simple thing to check. Just make sure you get them nice and tight. So let's check it out. All right now, people who know me well know I'm not a big GM fan, but this five-cylinder inline engine is actually an excellent engine. I had a customer in Houston with over 350,000 miles on his, and it burned a quart of oil about every 1,200 miles, but not bad. This particular one doesn't burn any oil at all yet, so they're not extremely powerful engines, but they can tow enough weight, and they can last an awful long time. Let's take it for a road test. Now, you can see that five-cylinder engine, it's in gear. They're smooth, idling engines. It's one of the reasons they made six cylinders and then they had a few experimental fives for various companies and they all work quite well. Now Audi's made five cylinder engines for years that were notorious for smooth power bands. There's nothing wrong with a five cylinder engine. They just never were all that popular. Now this truck has positive traction in the back and it's got that five cylinder engine. Let's see what it does on our little track here in a second. When this car gets out of the way, well we're gonna have to go now. It's got decent oomph to it. It's a very good little pickup truck. So now you know, in this case, it needed spark plugs. People are going to try to sell you a ton of stuff. People told them all kinds of insanity. They said you needed oxygen sensors, blah, blah, blah. He didn't need any of that. Now, he didn't care about the ABS. Three of the sensors have problems. Ah, who's even going to bother fixing it? Stops good enough. Check engine lights on because it's got an EVAP leak. If it runs good enough now and gets good enough gas mods, he's going to leave that alone too. Scan tool, a little bit of information. There's a lot of stuff you could fix in your car. Now, you don't need a fancy one like I have that fancy. It just makes it a lot easier to cover all bases. Even if you didn't have a scan tool, you never change the spark plugs in it. It's the original spark plugs on a car that's, what, 15 years old. So, what the heck? Change the spark plugs. It's not hard. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Civic Enthusiast says, I got a 2007 Nissan with an oil leak. Last year, I changed the throttle and ramp. I took it to a mechanic for a carrier bearing replacement. Truck's running fine, but now it's leaking oil. Problem started right after taking my truck into the mechanic. All right, well, you know, it's what? Uh, it's a 15-year-old Nissan. If it leaked immediately when you got it back and it's dripping in your driveway, you screwed something up, obviously. Now, if it happened a week or two or three later, who's to say it could have just flat worn out? If it immediately was leaking, take it back and see what happened. Maybe he left something loose, gasket on oil, pan, who knows? Some little thing could be loose. It could be that simple. Those big old V8 engines have a lot of gaskets on. There's lots of things that can leak. You want to find where it leaks from, too. If you want to do it yourself, I got a video how to find engine oil leaks. All you do is get an ultraviolet leak kit, pour it in the engine oil, drive it about 20 minutes on a highway, come back and get yellow sunglasses. The kits come with them and a UV light and you'll see where the green dye streaming out and you can find exactly where the leak. Let's say it's coming off the top from the valve covers. That just means they just started to leak now. So you'll be able to pinpoint it exactly that way. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.